Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another one here on the channel. In today's video, I got a good one here for you. We're testing another 2200 milliamp hour battery pack. It is a 3S and it's made by a popular brand and that is HRB. This is what the pack looks like. I got two of them here and we're gonna compare these up against the Turnigy battery pack. The Turnigy has a 45C and these things surprisingly have a 30C. So I'm very interested in the comparison on how these perform in comparison to our graphene battery packs that are coming from Turnigy. So what we're going to do is our standard test. We're going to get this through an internal resistance test. Then we're going to throw it onto our calculator to determine a C rating based off of that IR. And then we're going to throw it on our load test, which works out to be somewhere between 60 to 65 amps nominally. And we're going to see how it performs through each of these stages. Let's not waste any time and jump right into charging up these batteries. We're gonna start by charging up our HRB batteries. And one of the first things you're gonna notice here is that we're gonna run into a significant problem. Now, I've never had this problem here on the channel ever before in any batteries that I've ever tested here. And that is now over a year we've been doing this, but you can see the voltage is at 7.2 and now jumped up to 9.5. And I'm concerned already and really confused as to what the heck this could be. So we're gonna go and jump into the cell voltages and we now see and confirm we got 3.1, 3, 3.7, 3, 3, 1, I immediately think that it's the balance tap. So I go and wiggle this around and try and press it in a little more firm, but I've never had a balance tap issue. So it's not the issue here either or anyway. So we know that we have an issue on this battery pack. Before we do the load test, I'm gonna have to balance this out and make sure it's going to be at maximum voltage. I think we can recover this battery pack and it's gonna be okay. But unfortunately, we're gonna get the IR results from this voltage. So just to explain one of the questions that I got in the last video is that when I receive a battery, it goes on here onto this table and then I make sure it's temperature controlled and it sits there for a period of time at least overnight, and then I run it. I wanna make sure that my tests are consistent. I'm more worried about consistency rather than IR, best IR. So here we have the IR values. You can see those now on the screen, 6.452 and 6.4. Ideally, what I'm after here is consistency and not best performance. In fact, if we did get best performance, then my formula for calculating the real C rating based on IR doesn't work anyway. So that's not the goal here is to get best performance. When it comes to the load test, I wanna make sure that we start off with a healthy temperature and that is the temperature that we have here in this test. So I charge up the battery packs and right from there I go and jump into the load test. What I could do differently is heat them up to get better load test results but again I'm if I do that consistently to each of the batteries then they might perform a little bit marginally better but I'm also heating them up and I wouldn't recommend heating them up although you can if you want that better performance and those guys who are seeking them do do that type of thing in order to get the batteries up to better performance. You can cycle the battery to get better performance too, but essentially heating them up is going to be faster and better and you're not going to burn through cycles. So we see the last pack there, 464346. Four, Let's jump into our C rating calculator and see what we get there. Here's our Patreon calc sheet. If you're a member of either tier one or tier two on the RC Explained Patreon community, you can download a copy of this sheet for yourself and use all the tabs that you see on the bottom for your radio control needs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump right into our LiPo calcs tab here. And this is where we can take a look at the internal resistance and calculate that real C rating. So I'm gonna leave this for the Patreon members when they download the sheet in September. This will be live with these values for these specific battery packs. Our HRB 2230C that we just ended up running tests, I averaged both those results and we got 5.25 ohms there of milli ohms of resistance. So now we're gonna plug this in and see how we did compared to last week. We know that our capacity there is 2200 milliamp hour. Now we're gonna put our re resistance there of five point, oops, 5.25. So we plug that into the average cell internal resistance. Our battery packs calculated C rating is 23.3 C, gives us a maximum continuous current of around 51 amps, which is quite interesting because our load test is somewhere around that 60 amp mark continuous when we have a pretty decently healthy pack. If we have a really good pack, we should expect to see about 65 amps or so, but that's how that test works. We're gonna see if it actually is able to pass. This calculator says it's not going to pass that low test because it only has a 23.3 C rating, which is actually surprisingly close to our 30 C rated 
value that is found on the label of that pack. So now let's jump over to our performance data and see exactly how this pack performed against our Turnigy battery pack. Here's the data that we've collected for the HRB. I'm gonna quickly run through this. It's very similar to the last set. So if you've seen the videos and how we do this before, you're gonna understand what we're going through. So the very first thing that we're gonna look at is the total milliamp hour that the HRB delivered. HRB delivered 1535. This was an average for both of the trials that we did, meaning the pack with the higher internal resistance and the pack with the lower internal resistance. One was a little bit higher than the other. The other one was of course lower. So they averaged out to this value in comparison to the Turnigy. The Turnigy delivered 2051, which is a much better number of. Delivering that kind of capacity for a 2200 milliamp hour pack is a very good value for the Turnigy. Excellent battery there. Now the milliamp hour to 3.5 really shows on the Turnigy here as well. 173 for the HRB versus 205 on the Turnigy. 10.2 seconds for the HRB versus a 10.8 for the Turnigy. 59.8 milliamp hours delivered to 3.60 volts versus 92.5 on the Turnigy. So a decent difference there as well. And the time to get there is 3.55 versus 4.85. Obviously longer times here is better. And I was a little bit surprised here for the Turnigy value, but it's getting 3.50 volts at that 10 second mark versus a 3.5 for the HRB. When you look at the energy delivered per cell in watt minutes, 317 for the HRB and 420 for the Turnigy. Your average cell wattage, 199.9 on the HRB and 215.6 on the Turnigy graphene battery. So now the big thing here is what happened with this HRB as it went through its entire cycle. So we can look at that value here right from our graph. We can tell looking at this that we have the, at the very beginning, we start off with a voltage somewhere around 4.20. It might be cut off here in our blue line at the very beginning. And then it drops significantly down to somewhere around that 3534 mark. And then it holds that and drops off to just around that 3.32 value. That's the last value that I looked at here. And then I had to do something that we'll get to very shortly here. And you'll, that's why this ended up rebounding. The current ended up starting out over 60 amps. It started at 65 amps. It could not maintain it because we had a significant voltage drop and it dropped significantly. And then it kind of rests. If you look at the average value of current being pulled from this particular battery, it's looking closer to around that 57 amp mark. And what happened near the end of this battery pack here, almost near the end of the capacity, we probably could have pulled a couple hundred milliamp hour out of it if I was not worried about temperature but I am worried about temperature. I don't need all kinds of things to burn down and me to put out fires, uh, even though I'm ready for it if it does happen. This ended up having to have the uh, run cut. So I did have to cut both of these battery packs. I did cut the one with lower internal resistance a little bit later, but it did have to be cut as well. And it could not withstand the full duration under load at this load. So our calculator there for a real C rating said it can only deliver 51 C. We've confirmed at 57, it cannot do that. It is definitely lower than 57 amps that this thing can deliver on average. And that's what our average looks like for the most part. So that's why you see the voltage rebound here and current goes to zero because I cut it off and everything sits at zero and the voltage rebounds. And that's our result for the HRB. Well guys, that does it for our results. Now for some conclusions. Now I think the obvious thing here is that I'm quite surprised and shocked that HRB sends battery packs out that have such a drastic voltage difference. When this gets into the hands of someone new to the hobby, they may not know how to deal with it. The criticality of having batteries that are lower than potentially 3.00 volts. I don't have confirmation that we were there at it. I didn't measure the battery's voltage right away. I've never actually had this happen, so maybe I should include this as part of the process. But ultimately what we learn is that these battery packs can be shipped way, way, way out from its storage voltage and not even balanced. We had one pack cell that was at 3.7 while the others were just barely above that three mark. So I think that did affect the results. I can't be certain of that. I'd love to get another set of these, but we do have to move on. I got other battery packs that are going to be arriving. They're still in the USA and they're trying to get across the border and that process can take some time and sometimes it gets hung up as well but I'm trying to bring in some you know big name brands into Canada and we're going to be able to test those in the next coming months. 
When it comes to these packs, I would expect that batteries like this, they are well priced. They do have the convenience factor of easily getting them online. And if you can get a hold of these and you're not looking for the top most amount of power you can get out of a pack, this might fit that more budget friendly type of application. Just make sure that you don't have a significant load on these packs for the entire duration of a run and you're probably gonna be okay with these budget friendly packs. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.